of the Lawrence at home. My name is Fira and I'm one of the educators from the Lawrence Hall of Science and welcome to today's story time. So since it is currently winter, we thought that it would be fun to talk a little bit about winter science. And when I think about winter, I think about snowflakes. Snowflakes have beautiful and intricate patterns. And turns out these patterns are a result of science. Who knew that a little bit of chemistry and mathematics could make such beautiful works of art and nature? So without further ado, let's get into our story. So today, let's learn about the geometry of snowflakes. But first, let's explore how snow is formed in the first place. Now, the formation of snow is similar to how rain is formed. It just happens in colder temperatures. Now, this is the water cycle. And you may have already learned this in your science classes. But basically, this diagram tells us that when water evaporates from oceans, rivers, or lakes, they will turn into their gaseous form, water vapor, and form clouds. In the clouds, these water vapor will begin to condense back into their liquid or solid state. And as more and more water condenses, these condensations will be too heavy to be held within the clouds. So the cloud will release these droplets into the air in the form of rain or snow. Like we mentioned earlier, it all depends on the temperature. If the air is hot or warm, the condensation will melt and turn into rain. But if the air is cold, then the condensation will stay in its solid state, which is ice, so it snows instead. An interesting fact about snow and also rain is that thus particles are actually needed for this condensation to form. These particles become something called the condensation nuclei. And we can kind of think about this kind of like a seed that holds the water vapor particles together and allows them to condense. And when it's cold enough, the condensation comes in the form of ice crystals which then binds together to become snowflakes before they fall to the ground. And when we zoom in a little more, we see that depending on the temperature, snowflakes can have very different shapes, as shown by this chart here. So now, let's get into the pattern and geometry of snowflakes. It is unlikely that we'll ever find two identical snowflakes but we can still try to classify them according to their shapes. When the temperature is around minus five to minus 10 degrees Celsius or around 20 degrees Fahrenheit, we can get snow crystals of these shapes. Sometimes they occur as needles like this. You can see how the pointy tips kind of resemble needles. And these needles could either be solid, hollow, or partially hollow. Snow crystals can also come in the shape of six-sided columns. Now, these columns can either be long and thin or short and squat like this one. And when the column-shaped snow is tapered at one end, they become what we call bullets. Bullet-shaped snow can also join together like this to form what we call icy rosettes. Sometimes, we also get snow crystals with irregular patterns like this one. And these are also just as common as the other patterns because, well, snow crystals are imperfect. So here are some examples of snowflake patterns. And when the temperature gets even colder, say around minus 15 to minus 20 degrees Celsius, or around 10 degrees to zero degrees Fahrenheit, we get these beautiful shapes of snowflake patterns. And these shapes are probably what you would think about when you hear the word snowflakes. First, we have the hexagonal plates. And as the name suggests, it has six sides. Sometimes these plates are just plain hexagons, or sometimes they can have patterns in the center like this one. Now, more common than the hexagonal plates, we also have the stellar plates, which are pretty similar to hexagonal plates, only that they have bumps or arms that branch out from the center like this one. 
Now, probably the most common snowflake shape are the stellar dendrites. And this is probably what you would think of when you hear the word snowflakes. And then if the branches of a stellar dendrite looks feathery or fern-like, they're called fern-like stellar dendrites. Go figure. Snowflakes are called stellar when they branch out to look like a star, kind of like these three snowflakes here. Now, did you notice anything interesting about these snowflake shapes? You can pay attention to how many sides or arms they have. As you can see, most of them have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. And for the stellar snowflakes, they have one, two, three, four, five, six arms. Ooh, isn't that interesting? Out of any shape that they can take, they either have six sides or six arms. So how could this happen? Well, it all comes down to the shape of the water molecule. So this is when a little bit of chemistry and mathematics kicks in. So here is the water molecule or H2O with two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And by having the shape, water molecules become sort of like a template to align and stack the following units. When water freezes in the atmosphere, the water molecules will interact with each other in such a way that forms these hexagonal rings, similar to how we see the hexagonal plates look like earlier. And then when these rings stack up with each other, they can form the six-sided symmetry in snowflakes. So, wow, isn't that really cool? Just building from the simple shape of the water molecule, nature can shape the beautiful patterns of snowflakes. Now, you too can make your snowflakes at home. But instead of using freezing water, we'll be using paper. So, let's move on to our activity and make some paper snowflakes. And don't worry, we'll guide you through the whole process. So, come follow us. So to make our paper snowflakes, here is what you need. You'll need a piece of paper, a pair of scissors, and then to help you draw the patterns, you'll need a pencil and an eraser. And now on to making the snowflakes. Oh yeah, if you want to match the color of snow, you can go ahead and use a white piece of paper. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take one corner of the paper and we fold it over into a triangle to the other side like this. After you meet the corners, you can smooth it out like so. And then we're going to grab a, our scissors and we'll cut this excess off. Be careful when you're using scissors. Scissors are kind of sharp, so you can go ahead and ask an adult to help you. Just make sure to be careful. So by doing this, we have actually created a square piece of paper that we can now use to make our snowflakes. So now you want to fold the paper back into the triangle pre that we've made before. And then from this triangle, we want to make another triangle. So just fold this triangle into half. After you've made make the corners meet, you can just smooth it out. And there you go, a smaller triangle. So now that we have the smaller triangle, we're going to fold it into a wedge. And how we're going to do this is that we're going to try to divide this section into three. You can either rule it out or you can estimate. I'm just going to estimate here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side and fold it over like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just do it however you like. And then we can do the same thing on the other side. Fold it over to form kind of like this little arrow shape. There. So after you have your wedge, you want to flip it over to the other side where you can see the straight line over here. 
and then you want to start drawing the basic pattern of your snowflake on this side. You can be as creative as you want with the pattern or you can also plan it out on a piece of paper beforehand but I'm just gonna draw like a really squiggly shape. I'm just gonna have fun with it and you should have fun with it too. So I'm just gonna do that and then maybe I'll do more squiggles like that. There. That's how my pattern's gonna look like. And remember, like I said earlier, you can always be creative with it. Just make sure that the shapes are connected at places along the side edges, like here, so that your snowflakes will not cut off. And then when you open the paper, you can unveil the snowflakes later. So after you've drawn out your pattern, you can start cutting. This is a little trickier than cutting the paper beforehand. So once again, be careful and you can go ahead and ask an adult, maybe a sibling or a parent to help you out with this process. But just go ahead and cut following the lines that you've drawn. And now I have the pattern of my wedge all cut out. And let's put all the residue aside. And now the moment of truth. We will unveil our cut to reveal our beautiful snowflake. Ta-da! We did it! So here is the snowflake that I made from my pattern. Isn't it really beautiful? And as you can see, our paper snowflake has six branches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm, I think this could be a stellar snowflake. Maybe a stellar dendrite or maybe more specifically a fern-like stellar dendrite. <laughs> so like I said earlier, you can go ahead and get creative with the shape of your paper snowflakes and you can try to make paper snowflakes like the shapes that we talked about earlier. So go ahead and get creative and make your own paper snowflakes at home. All right, scientists. Thank you so much for joining me on Storytime today. I hope you had fun learning about snowflakes as well as making some snowflakes. So make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more science content. And we'll see you next time. Bye!